morning, it's Jeremy. It's Saturday, April the 3rd, uh, Easter weekend. Uh, we're back in lockdown again in Toronto, unfortunately. However, this is a, a good time to uh, plan our next big adventure. Today I want to talk about uh, GRIB files, G-R-I-B files, and specifically uh, GRIB files in OpenPlotter. Now back in August of last year, uh, I had a blog post and a YouTube video about RTLSDR, that's the, the miniature receiver, and how to receive HF weather facts. So that was a way of getting weather information and the reports came in in kind of like a fax format. Let me just scroll down here. And this is the type of map. There's, for instance, a surface forecast and uh, a wind and wave forecast. So that's the type of information you got in the weather HF weather facts. But today I want to look at GRIB files now a GRIB file is, um, it stands for a gridded binary data format and it's uh, defined by the World Meteorological Organization. The, the idea is similar to, uh, in my world, a telecom world, a, um, a, a DEM file. A DEM file is used for storing uh, elevation information versus latitude and longitude and it's used in propagation prediction. So it's the same idea. It's a way of gridding latitude and longitude and storing parameters such as elevation or in the case of weather it would be let's say surface wind speed and direction, atmospheric pressure, temperature, precipitation, visibility, cloud cover, wave height and direction, that type of thing and also the changes over a several day period. Now in open plotter um, there is a, a program called XY Grib and you can use that to get a hold of the Grib file. The Grib file is downloaded over the internet so you need an internet connection now, depending on the number of parameters and the granularity of your definition of what you need, the files can get fairly big. I took one example of, let's say, one degree latitude by one degree longitude, uh, a grid of 0.25 degrees over a seven day period, three hour interval. File size was 132 kilobytes. So on an internet connection, if you're, if you're in a Wi-Fi area or, or off an ethernet cable, that's nothing. But if you're in the middle of nowhere, and you've got to get this file over an SSB connection or a satellite download. It might take a fair amount of time. So just be careful on what you need in the GRIB file because it may take you a fair amount of time to uh, download it. So let's look at uh, OpenPlotter. I'm just sitting at my desk here and I've got it on VNC server. So if you open OpenPlotter here, uh, go down here to XY GRIB Viewer. <coughs> so that opens. And what you have to do is uh, use your mouse to define an area of interest. Let's say you want to know the uh, weather parameters in this area, for instance. And then you hit this button here, which is the download uh, button. Now let's make it one degree by one degree. So let's make this 43.0 to, let's say, 44, 44.0, and make this minus 80 minus 80 to minus 79. There's different models you can use depending on the type of information you want. Let's say the atmospheric is GFS and the wave model is WW3. Let's say we have a 0.25 uh, degree resolution interval every three hours and let's say well let's say, let's take a period of let's say three days this time and let's say these are the parameters we want. Wind at 10 meters, wind gust, mean sea level pressure, temperature, uh, cloud cover, relative humidity, total precipitation. So let's say that's what we want. Wave data, significant height, swell, and wind waves. So let's download this. <clears throat> and we're going to save it in the default uh, location is home pi xy grib grib. So we'll save it there. So there it is, uh, there's the information and we can just like Toronto's over here somewhere. So as we mouse through here, let's uh, let's pick a spot here. Let's say Toronto's about there, I don't know, I'm just guessing. Um, over here, we can see the information of that particular spot. So the wind's coming from 211 degrees, uh, 8.6 knots, gusting to 13.9 knots, uh, mean surface level pressure 1027.2 HPA, temperature uh, 2.5 degrees centigrade etc so that's all the information there now let's just go into the file and see where it's stored here so if I go into file manager and I go into home pi 
uh, it'll be stored in XY grib. So there's the grib file we just downloaded. Let's see how big it is. It's 83.5 uh, kilobytes. So you could work out um, the download time depending on your speed. Remember it's bytes, so each byte is 8 bits. So you would multiply uh, 83.5 kilobytes by 8 to give you the number of bits required. And you divide that by the download speed. Now the next thing we can do is we can go into OpenCPN and we can look at this information as well. So um, <clears throat> Open Plotter, Open CPN. So there's Toronto. Let's go here. There we go. Now over here, this symbol here, the the weather vanes. Uh, if you if you click on there then you get the grib menu okay uh, and this comes up so what we can do now is just we can load the file we've just downloaded so there it is sitting in pi xy grib grib incidentally sometimes when you open the file viewer you won't see this directory and that's because it's a hidden file so just right click and say show all files show hidden files and you'll see the xy grib it may not be visible Okay, so there we've loaded the uh, we've loaded the grip file. And if I mouse over here, uh, I mouse over an arrow, for instance, a wind arrow. Um, there's it tells you the wind. It's 13 knots at 260 degrees, 216. Excuse me. So just to summarize, then uh, previously last year we look at we looked at getting various types of weather information over HF uh, facts, and now we're looking at getting information from grip files over an internet connection. If you're at shore, no problem, you're on cable or Wi-Fi. If you're in the middle of the ocean, then you have to download this information over the internet, either by email or from a server directly. And so you have to consider uh, the download speed and what it's costing you. So you have to be conservative in terms of what you're asking for. Just ask for what you want for the time period you want. Don't ask for any more because it's going to cost you more money.